Hey, Joe. What's good, buddy? Yo, dude, it's been like a week since we had a safety meeting, and we have so much to talk about. So oh, yeah. let's fucking get right to it. Hey, brother. Cheers. Cheers. Mm-hmm. So, yo, I just want to say welcome everybody back to another episode of Safety Meeting. If you don't remember who we are, I'm Big Pat. This cousin Joe Joe. We're here. We're doing the damn thing. And we got some great news to tell you all. Uh, so I'll tell them. So on our road to 100 subscribers that we're truly striving for, we had some big news uh, announcement here in the state of New York this week. And this week they said, hey, New York, if you're over the age of 21, you can now recreationally smoke pot. Hey. Hallelujah. I mean, I've been doing it anyways. I was going to do it even if they didn't say so. Fuck yeah. So thank <clears> you, uh, the people in the state of New York who finally decided that it's not actually a drug. We appreciate what you're, uh, what you're doing here for us. It takes the risk factor of us making these videos and reduces it to down to zero. So thanks for that. Yo, Here's you- to our fellow New Yorkers. We hope you burn them and burn them down all the way. Yo, do you think America is in the business of uh, human trafficking? Because I ain't going to lie to you, bro. It kind of seems that way. What do you mean, like, by America? Like, Uh, powers that be or the entire country as a whole? uh, No, the powers to be. I I don't think me and you are selling people. No. But I know of. We do have a president who owned an island right next to Epstein. I'm not saying, you know, he did anything fishy, but he did some fishy shit. A little sus. And now, as soon as he becomes president, we got, it happened with Trump. Yeah. But not to this magnitude. Bro, you got people walking up the border control as soon as they come across the border and just giving themselves up because they know that they're going to be granted asylum. This motherfucker is supposedly releasing people in the public with no paperwork. That don't happen. Doesn't sound right to me. No, those people are being bought and sold. How the hell you you got 20,000 little kids locked up at the border right now? Bro, I see a... At least I seen a video just the other day on CNN. Two two smugglers ran up to the fence, took these two five five and a three year old girl, dropped them right over the fucking border and went on and running. Like, if that doesn't scream child sex ring to you, I don't know what else does. What what the, what about the fact that Biden? This is straight from the horse's mouth that Biden has people who are there to do uh, damage control. Like, okay, like, for example, they're they're being paid to just make sure that if anybody comes in to do a report, nobody takes pictures. Nobody takes videos. Oh, yeah, they tried. Nobody nobody is supposed to let the outside world know what's actually going on other than by word of mouth. They tried kicking Ted Cruz out because of that one, because he was in there recording. He's talking about, what you mean I can't record? Why, why don't you want the public to see this? Why don't you want them to just want to see all these kids locked in this cage right here with fucking space blankets, sit not, not a couple feet apart, not three feet or six feet or anything like that, shoulder to fucking shoulder. Why you got all these kids pounding up like that? Like right. they're a fucking dog in a kennel. And anytime you see pictures of them or videos of them, everybody's laying down like they're all sick or... They're all just extremely exhausted or something. You know, but everybody's are, laying down. They're stacked on top of each other, shoulder to shoulder. News reporter asked one of the fucking, I'm going to call him a guard because that's what he is, but border patrol agents. So do you guys give these kids rec time? Do they get free time to go out and play and, you know, get sunshine and fresh air, this, that, and the third, you know, normal stuff? You just got real quiet. They want to answer. Like, he didn't know how to answer it. <coughs> I mean, like, let's let's talk about something, you know, along the same lines. Like, 
if you think about in history, all these different uh, scenarios like you're seeing now at the border, didn't they used to call them concentration camps? Or is that is that a little bit over overstepping? See, here's my thing with it, right? Here's why I think that it's human trafficking, right? You got all these little kids there right now. A lot of them there without their parents. What was the first thing he said? We're not going to send any kid back without their parent. So what you doing with all those little kids? They ain't got no parents. Where where are you putting them? Right. Where are they going? We got no real proof of it. They're loading. They're loading up. You know, buses and buses of kids ranging from five to eleven years old. And bring them where? They're undocumented. You know what I mean? Yeah, they bring them they where? They, right. They don't speak English. They don't do anything. So you know where I think they go? I think those buses go to those fucking tunnels. Maybe Look, they're all human guinea pigs. I don't know. Like, okay, I don't know how this all began. I don't know when it all began. I don't know where it all began. But the fact that it's happening on such a grand scale right now, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, every day, it's like, as a person, as a human being, you can't help but feel like you have to ask those questions like, is this really happening? Is this trafficking? Is this, you know, dealing with thousands of immigrants every single day? Like, first, let's, we should just retrace all those questions, right? And, and the first question should be, what made them want to come here? What, what was it about? Was it just for the journey? That you wanted to walk that 2,200 miles from Honduras to fucking they came to here. Texas? They came here for the same reason your ancestors came here. Right. They wanted to live the American dream. But here's the weird part. Here's a lot of people showing up and they're wearing Biden t-shirts. Now how the fuck are they getting Biden t-shirts in Honduras? Makes you wonder if maybe they were enticed to head that direction. Makes you wonder if, if you think about it, we even before January, before the election, or not, excuse me, not the election, but before inauguration, even back in December, there were warning of a caravan of migrants making their way through Latin America and Central America, making their way to the United States. So it sounds like it was put into play a long, long, long time ago. So now I'm not a detective and I'm not a political analyst, you but. Do not- you do know this is something that happens every year, right? Yeah. But to me, the way that it's so many people, hundreds of thousands of people, it almost seems as if, now this is my opinion, as if maybe some people went down to Honduras and had a talk with the locals. And they said, look, your current state of life is shit. Your current ec- economy is shit. You guys have nothing. You've used up all your resources. So here's what I can promise you. If you, can, if you can get as many people as you can and make your way to the United States of America, we'll provide you with a place to live. We'll provide you with a means of income until you're able to find a job. And the only thing I need from you in return is that when it's time to vote, everybody fucking votes blue. And they're like, okay, no problem. So then they do, and they get their whole family and their, and everybody. And now you have hundreds of thousands of people walking. It, it just, it, these are my, this is my opinion. That's just how I'm kind of seeing it and following the trail. I don't know how you feel about it, but it just, it seems like that's how it went. A hundred percent. Like I said, I feel like it's human trafficking. You got these, you got these cartels, and what do they call them? People that run people back across and forth the border, like uh, coy- uh, coyotes. Coyotes, yeah. Like you got all these coyotes and shit like that. Why wouldn't you put it past them to be out there running around kidnapping people, and I mean, and just saying, you know what, you're going to America. If you don't go to America, we're gonna kill you. Like, what if a lot of these people that 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 are sneaking across? What if they're bringing something across? And they're leaving it. Like disease. 
Well, you know, I'm a disease, one thing, but what if it's something bigger than that? What, what if, what if some of them are bringing across drugs and shit like that and they're leaving them somewhere before they get caught by border, border control. Right. Right. So, so I get over, I hide my shit and then I'll find a border patrol agent and I say, yo, I just snuck across the border. That's what a lot of these people have been doing. And then they send you back. What kind of a message is it being sent? To me, it says it shows the whole world right now that we're vulnerable. See, that's only if you look at it as an invasion. I don't look at it as an invasion, bro. Because let's say, let's say your theory is right. Someone went down there and they said, yo, listen, you can come to America. We'll live the American dream. Just walk right over. Right? Whatever. Just These, vote blue. Yeah, whatever. And that's, hey. Back in the day, they used to give people the same promises, bro. Back. They still do it nowadays. But what I'm trying to say is those people, if that if your if your ideology is right, those people are coming here in the same premise as your ancestors. They're so, promise amnesty. Yeah. You come here, you so, vote blue, and we'll give you amnesty. Well, no, that's not even what I'm saying. Amnesty is only really if you've done something wrong. They haven't right. done anything wrong by coming here. That, they, that you know of. Nobody knows anything about them. But listen, that, but see, that's the thing. What you do somewhere else doesn't involve here, bro. But if, okay, so if you're, if you're a dude that lives over in Brazil and you do, you're a car bomber and you get arrested for car bombing and you're on the run, you make it to America, you're free? That's different. Oh, so in a lot of places, yes. Because you're a not lot a car bomber anymore. You're no, a car bomber. No, because a, a lot of, no, a lot of places just won't extradite you to another country. Like Canada, Canada will not extradite you to ba- uh, back to America if America plans on giving you the uh, if America plans on giving you the death penalty. Panama, Panama will not extradite you whatsoever. Russia, Russia will not extradite you. Isn't it, yeah, you have what is that called? Diplomatic immunity. Yeah. There's a lot of countries like that where they just won't send you back. We don't care. You're what you did there doesn't involve here. You blew up their shit. You didn't blow up our shit. So, what was the saying that they that they put on the Statue of Liberty? You know, send, send us your huddled masses, your hungry, your poor, this, that, and a third. If it was good for the founding fathers of this country, why isn't it good now? That's what a whole. That's what that's that's what America's supposed to be. America's supposed to be the place where we can take your garbage and we can make it something beautiful. Like, I know it's a fucked up analogy, but that's the truth. So, yeah, I think I, I, I'm kind of with that uh, Cortez lady. Like, looking at having them tell you that these people are invaders and that this is an insurgent and all this bullshit, it's giving you the wrong context. It's making you ready for war. Why do you need to be ready for war? What what do a bunch of immigrants have have for you to be re- really that dangerous about? Are they coming across with with nukes and bombs and guns? And are they coming over here killing people immediately? Like they're not really coming over here. Like most of them are kids, bro. Little kids, teenagers, shit like that. People that can still be changed. They want you to hate them. They want you to have that animosity. It shit. It, a lot of those people, their their heritage. This is their fucking land. All right, here you go. I got one for you. This might sound a little crazy, but whatever. It's a safety meeting. Go for it. <laughs> What if they're bringing in all these all these people? Like, it's definitely, like, what if it's part of the plan? And it's all pretty much, uh, if you can kind of read between the lines of what I'm saying, like, all pretty much, like, uh, a way to, to feed the dragons. <laughs> More context. Okay, so, you know, like, the, the concept of the, uh, you know, like, the lizard people. And how they eat babies and all these different things. Yeah. What if what if they're Human just they're, they, 
Well, there's trafficking, which is like basically slavery. Another word for slavery, selling and not selling. always just buying and selling people. But what if, if you're, what if they're buying and selling them to eat them? Right. And if you get a whole bunch of people with no names and no backgrounds and hell, not even a dental record, it's better to make them disappear. That's like, I think I, the dragon. I think the thing it's kind of crazy. I know it's fucking crazy. Do you guys think I'm crazy? Just a little bit. Just, I think I think the me. Suez, I think the, the boat that got caught in the Suez Canal has got a lot to do with this too. Like people are gonna think you're thinking um I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like I, I said it the last time. Stone Monkey, an amazing book that I wrote. I read. Dudes was smuggling people over in shipping crates. Like what if what if that was just to take your eyes off of this or vice versa? You know what I'm saying? One of them was a shadow game for the other. I personally think the evergreen thing is going to start like a fucking uh, a famine somewhere, bro. Because a lot of those shipping crates had food on it. Livestock. Fresh water. Shit like that. Going to countries like India and stuff like that. A lot of these third world countries that are already run them low. With you. I definitely agree with you. I definitely think that that ship didn't, that wasn't an accident. How stupid you got to be to say that I could turn this big ass boat around in this little ass canal. Right. Like, was it your first day on the job? Like the first day ever behind any boat? Did you know that we could smoke pot legally in New York now? I did know that. Oh, I was just reminding in case people didn't hear us at the beginning of the episode. Oh man, you got to understand, folks. Okay, I'm I'm a 38 year old man. I've been playing the game of messing around with pot for you know long time. Back in the day when you used to have to have code words when you call people. Like, so you could talk about when, whether or not you could stop by and come get it, or you'd have to make arrangements with people. I think you it was know? just you. Right. I never had any code names. We did back in the day. Some people called it coffee. Some people called it you know, all sorts of shit. Had code names. It was always just, you good? You straight? All right, I'll be over in a minute. Not talking back when I was like 16, though. You know what I mean? Hey, man, you know where to get any of that coffee? Oh, yeah. See, I was a I was a 16 year old that didn't care, so I just walked up to people. Yo, you got pot? Reefer, sir. Anybody? Anybody got any? No. Hmm. No. Uh, I got some. I was just wondering if you guys wanted to smoke it with me. But no, for real, though, man. All this shit's connected, bro. Like, what? It's blatant. Yeah. Like, yo, why? Why is it that you have in a lot of communities across across the world, and you have a an influx of like Native American women that would just go missing, and they don't do shit about it. Like, yo, bro, there, I've seen documentaries. This is whole fucking Providence up in Canada that every year, like, hundreds of fucking Native women and only Native women go missing. And they don't do shit about it. They don't never find any of them. None of it. Like. Yo, what the hell, Canada? It's not just Canada. This shit happens here in America, too. I like, know, but I was, I was just adding to you what you were saying. Like, so, and then what if it's. It's just people of color, bro. That's the only people it's happening to. Like you got the slight, you got the slight majority of you know what you know white folks that get caught up in human trafficking and whatnot. But I don't think it's as prevalent as it is with other people. But when white folks come up missing, it turns into a mystery, and the whole community looks for them. Yeah, it's a fact. I don't know why it is, and I'm sorry that it is that way. It's not my fault specifically. But it is that way. But when it, when it's in a person of color or a person of any other ethnicity, 
we went off. We were doing drugs, you know. We're just out binging, gang and banging. not worry about it. You know, we 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 got ourselves into some trouble, like, or we were just at the fucking part. We were at the bar with everybody else, and on our way home, we bumped into a fucking serial rapist or a serial killer, and here we are. I'm sorry, people. This episode has just gotten really weird and strange. And there's a lot of strange shit. Here's your strange one. I, I hear oh one for you. I know you probably saw it. Joe and I haven't really actually spoke a lot this week, but that doesn't mean mean nothing. But so, did you hear about the Satan shoes? Yes. Yes. Really? Little, little Nas's Satan shoes. Yes, I did hear yeah. about this. Yeah, six hundred sixty-six pair for one thousand and eighteen dollars. Did you hear that Nike sued him because of the Satan shoes? Yeah. Yep. Okay, but good move the, on Nike. So here's the thing. So then there's this video. Did you see the video? Oh, the one where he's giving Satan a lap dance. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh my God. I mean. Little kids yeah. look up to Lil Nas X, man. Yeah, I seen I seen this uh, one video. Of this uh, dude, he was trying to like break it down, sitting there trying to talk about the whole video was him just telling the world, "Fuck you, this is who I am, and you need to accept my sexuality." No, first, I, um, how does that have anything to do with grinding on Satan? Right. We don't even know if Satan's a male or a female. Right. You're you're going reverse cowboy on Satan in, in a music video. And little kids look up to you. And then you're selling devil shoes with human blood in it, allegedly. Yeah. And then you know what? They sold out. Oh, yeah, I bet you. But the only gothic people and people that just collect shoes. You think so? Yeah, it's crazy, man. I don't, I don't think too many uh, basketball players are going out there saying, "I gotta get them little nice shoes, man." It's so, gonna help my, it's gonna help my game out. So, so let me ask you. So, just based off of what we know about it, do you think it was a form of being artistic, or do you think it was a form of representing Satan, or you know, that you know? Satan. I really don't know because uh, Lil Nas X personally has the he just has the feel of industry plant 100%. Comes out of nowhere and just blows the fuck up. Isn't he a trans? Isn't that his deal? Uh, uh, no, he's just, he's just gay. I think. He's just gay. Just gay. Or homosexual. I don't really know what the accepted vernacular is because everyone in this fucking generation is so goddamn fucking emotional sensitive. and sensitive. Oh, sensitive. You offended me. It hurt my feelings. I don't care. I get my feelings hurt all the fucking time. Jesus. <laughs> try, you try having a four-year-old who thinks that she's a 13-year-old. She is very sassy. She hurts your feelings. Get over it. If she can get over it, you can get over it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of other things that's happened this week. That this generation needs to learn to just get the fuck over it. Oh, I got my first speeding ticket S- today. Stop letting people hurt your sticks and stones. People may break my bones, I'm but rubber. words will never hurt me. I'm rubber, S- you're glue. Stop fucking crying. What is it? Whatever you say, bounce off me and fucking sticks to you. Exactly. All right. I, I'm going on a rant about this. I don't care. Stop fucking crying about shit. I know Pat can agree with me. You can stop crying. I kind of feel <laughs> like I'm crying now because you guys piss me off to the point to where it's like every day I got to, I, like, you kind of like censor yourself when you talk to somebody. How is that freedom of speech? You don't have to. I see that. You don't have to like what I say, bro. You don't even got to listen, but I'm going to fucking say it. Do 
Yo, what up, Blue? What up, Blue? Yo, you, do you think animals get upset when we call them by the wrong name? Like, like, like we give our pets a name, right? But what if that's the name, not the name that their mother gives them, right? In whatever dog language they got or cat language. Do you think they get upset when we're sitting there like, come here, Athena. Come here, girl. Come here. Who's my good girl? And she's just sitting there looking at you for the first, like, six months, three months, like, who? You know, until she figures out that that's her name. Yeah, I know. I did that to myself. <laughs> but do you think they get pissed off? Maybe. And then it's just like a form of Stockholm Syndrome from there on forward. I don't know, man. My cat only comes to me when I call him Mill. I call him Milford. He doesn't like it. Like, he likes it, but he don't like it. He likes Mill. I never really had a cat respond to their name. Because I train my cat like a dog. And he responds, like, to it. It's pretty cool. I train my dog like a little person. And she irritates me like one, too. Wow. What? You ever have that moment when you're having a safety meeting? And you realize that Fist Magic is going to win a Super Bowl with the Redskins? No, it's not. Against the Bills? No, I don't think that's it. Oh, no, that's it. Because, listen, 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 hear me out, right? I'm trying to. This is going to be his ultimate revenge season. Uh, Probably not. No, he's no. It is, man. Listen, all right, because he's going to take out the Buccaneers in the playoffs. All right, because the Buccaneers didn't really believe him, and they thought Jameis was the shit. And then we found out that Jameis really isn't the shit. All right, so Joe's on some shit. All right. So just listen, listen. I'm listening. It's gonna be ultimate revenge season for him, bro. And then the Bills, the Bills are gonna squeak it out in the AFC. Just barely get past uh, the Steelers in the AFC championship. No. And then Ryan Fist Magic is just gonna throw for fucking six touchdowns. And twelve interceptions. Hey, but it's going to be all right because those 12 interceptions, y'all ain't going to get nowhere. I'm telling you. It's good, to, it's good to know you're optimistic about it, Joe. Bro, this whole season is going to be different. It's not even just because of Fitz Magic, bro. William Jackson. Shut down corner. Completely going to. Y'all ain't got nothing. You'll see, man. Do exactly what we did this year, but this time we won't lose to a a Hail Mary. No, you won't. We got to answer for the Chiefs. That's just based off what what normally happens every year. Think about it, man. The team that loses the fucking AFC and NFC championships normally don't even make the playoffs next year. Well, Well, we're going to the Super Bowl next year. That's the next stop. That's what I'm saying. You guys are going to lose against the Redskins because Bill stands for, boy, I love to lose Super Bowls. <laughs> Never gets old. Never. Just like wide left or wide right, whatever it was. Either way, it was wide. Only opportunity you guys really had. Yeah. And then. You're starting to stress me out, Joe. It's not my fault that, yo, why, here's my question. Why didn't Ace Ventura make Ray Finkel play for the Bills and not the fucking Dolphins? I've always wondered that my entire life. Maybe because they'd get sued, so they had to do a spinoff. It's basically the same story. Except uh, except Norwood was not a woman. I'm just saying, bro, I think it would have been so much funnier. From my perspective. 
we all know it. We all know what they were meaning when they said the, when they did the movie. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Could you imagine they could have had Jim Kelly tied up instead of having Dan Marino tied up? No one even liked Dan Marino. We talk about he's the face of the Dolphins during that '90s era. Fuck Dan Marino. It's overrated. He was a hell of a good quarterback for he was, that didn't achieve a whole lot. He was fucking overrated, man. Fill the stands, though. Yeah, because he was overrated. How many Super Bowls he win? He never even been to one. Exactly. No, he he went to one and lost his second year in the league. Sounds like Dan Marino. Never even made it back. Want to know why? Because he was fucking overrated. I hope y'all like that. If you guys uh, do not like this show tonight, <laughs> just know you can go fuck yourselves. We can talk about sports. We can talk. This is our podcast. But if you did like it, there's a button down here at the bottom of the screen. Like, subscribe, notifications. Hit all of them, man. Oh, and a share button. Share this bitch with your friends. You need a high five. No, I need a hug. Dude, you don't like hugs. I don't, but I, I need I need a hug. I feel like you do. I feel like you I feel like you're, you're a little tense. That's what the safety meeting's all about. Well, you know, I went to the massage parlor the other day, but Robert Kraft was in there before me, so they were a little bit too tired, so I didn't get my happy finish, my, my happy ending. I don't know who that is. Robert Kraft? You definitely know who Robert Kraft is because his team has destroyed George for the last 20 years. Uh, allegedly. I mean, there was no allegedly about it. You guys just didn't fucking win. I tried to, yeah, whatever, Joe. So, so did you watch the new uh, King Kong movie? No. I are, you, are you going to? I don't know. I was never really a a Godzilla or a King Kong fan. So I, so I can tell you how it ends. Kong always wins. No, actually, it ended the same way as the last time. No one won. They became friends. Love wins out, my man. They protect the they protect the world together. Yep, while wearing speedos. That's just what I was told. And that they held hands right at the end there. Yep. He's like, "You pull my tail, I'll beat your chest." Make direct eye contact the whole time. Yeah, it sounds like a fun Saturday night. We're just getting warmed up, folks. Man. So, so Joe Biden, what do you think? Have you heard anything about this new infrastructure bill that he's trying to pass? No, but I did hear something. But continue your thought. I was just asking you if you had heard anything about it. I, I think it's just more of a fucking tax hike than anything else. Okay. Probably. Of course they're going to try to raise taxes. Stimulus. Anyways. <laughs> so, See, they can't this, raise this, taxes on the stimulus. They have to find other ways to do it. I was reading uh, on, uh, on Rumble, one of the guys... I, I follow on my rumble is Donald Trump Jr. He makes these, you know, five minute, six minute little videos. And one of the videos he was referenced, shout out to Donald Trump Jr. by chance if you see safety meetings. But anyways, uh, that they're trying to push a bill making it to where if Americans want to travel from state to state within, within states, they have to ha- maintain 
well, uh, what they call it, like basically a vaccine pace, vaccine passport. Yep. So they are okay. That's, the, that's if you want to fly. That's if you want to fly within the country. Like if you want to drive from or fly from New York to fucking Arkansas, you have to have a, a vaccine passport. They're no, it's not, it's not, it's not official yet. They're trying for it though. I can tell you right now, they don't let me take weed on a plane, so I don't go anywhere on a plane. Or a greyhound. It just that's that's I believe that's beyond crossing the line, man. How are you gonna tell me? where I can and can't go based off a of vaccine in the America that we all live in. Mark of the Beast. <coughs> I'll fucking drive to wherever I gotta go. You can't stop me. Shortly after that, they would restrict that also. You can't get a driver's license unless you've been vaccinated. Because unless you've been vaccinated from the coronavirus, what do you need to leave your house for? You're a danger to everybody and yourself. But it's all right, because in six months we're all there's just gonna be a huge zombie apocalypse. So, do not quote me on that. Did you know that it's part of the laws? Now they haven't figured out a way to dispense it yet and regulate it. But each person is allowed to, from what I gather, grow up to six plants. For own personal consumption, for 21 and older, of course, recreational use. Give me a catch somewhere. Yeah, they haven't figured out a way to regulate it yet, so it's still just a new thing. But just think about this. If you and a group, have a group of friends, where like it, at least if your group is four people, okay, that's 24 plants. Each person has a different strand, so it's all different weed. Nice and you business. take you take you take care of each other. And nobody, there's no money exchanged. I grow some of this, you grow some of that. And we switch. We, you know, we just happen to have like a common ground area where we're someone's doing. always going to be greedy in that situation. Maybe if you got to worry about that, then you're obviously going into business with the wrong people. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you just? That's just human nature. Doesn't matter who you go into business with. People are always different when when it comes to making money. But it's not about making money. It's just helping each other out. Saving money is making money. If, but, if you have the ability to grow your own weed and never have to be able to buy it anymore, you save all that money. So you just made all that money. Right. But I'm not selling it. I wouldn't want to sell it. I would just trade. That's it. Just trade. Yeah, but you're still indirectly making the money from it. Right. You're making money by the fact that there's no actual exchange of currency. Exactly. So it's like it's like uh, untouched money that you got to claim. So someone's going to try to be greedy. Right. Say, oh man, your shit's not as good as mine. So, for every ounce you give me, I'm only going to give you two. <sighs> shit. When me, shit, if you're going to tell me I can grow six plants, why wouldn't I just grow six different strands? Because you only got one shot at it. So? So, as you need. I don't know. I think it'll be interesting in the days to come. That's for sure. I'm sorry for eating the chips, people. I'm a fat kid at heart. Sorry, not sorry. No, I am sorry. Because I know better. My mama raised me better than that, people. He's just stealing all these little Mexican kids in front of everybody, and no one fucking cares, bro. Nobody. Bro, so the other day, I was at work, right? 
We went on break, going for coffee break. And I just don't give a fuck. So I jumped in the back of the truck and rode in the back, right? Can you send me a video? Yeah. Dude, when I got to the gas station, man, everybody, this is how I felt. This is the only way I know how to explain it. But everybody looked at me like I was either one of two things. I was either a bum <laughs> in the back of this truck or uh, I'm, I'm an illegal or something. But then they get up close to me and they realize, oh, wow, this guy's just dumb. He's, <laughs> he's sitting in the back on a fucking 50 degree day. I don't care, though. Sometimes you just got to live a little, people. Jump in the back of a truck, go for a ride. No, on a 50 degree day, fuck no, I ain't doing that, man. That's not the type of living I'm trying to do. Yeah. But when you work in these tight rooms that are dusty and dark, it's good to go outside and get some fresh air. So if we're just going for a quick little one mile down the road drive, I'm hopping in the back of the truck. I don't give a fuck. Nope. I used to do it all the time. I set up a lawn chair. I just don't care. I don't care. <laughs> if I didn't feel safe, I wouldn't do it. I don't like to be cold. I agree with that statement. I'm sitting in my house wearing my hoodie on. And I'm sitting Put up and everything. Exactly. So Dedication. I, I just don't like being cold. Couldn't you? I'm doing all Man. right. JJ's got JJ's got this buddy, right? And they play the Xbox together. And for some reason, he's got the Xbox set up on the computer also. So every time he gets an invite, I get a notification on the computer. This whole time, I've been doing no, I've been hearing nothing but do 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 do. It's funny. It is, but it isn't at the same time because then I'm sitting there hearing in my ear constantly. It's annoying. Oh, I can yeah. see why people don't watch this right here. Because you know what? We just talk about our own shit. We talk about our own lives and we just say, fuck you people. I, <laughs> I kind of forgot that we were doing something like that for a moment. Isn't that why I call it real talk? That is exactly why I call it real talk. Because that's exactly what this is. If you don't want to listen to two people having a conversation, then I don't think this is the show for you. <laughs> Big facts. But, you know, that's just all right, though. If you, if you guys, you know, want to be in on the conversation, hit us up on Facebook. Be like, yo, Joe, let me be on a podcast. And I'll be like, you got anything interesting to say? Because Pat don't be on the fucking Facebook page because he's a bum. Oh, man, I said fuck Facebook. You can still interact with your fans, bro. People like you. You can interact on YouTube. But they like you better. No, I don't think so. I don't hear nobody commenting. Just Charlie. And they like you better. <laughs> if you guys like tonight's episode, if you have any thoughts about all the stuff that we talked about, just drop a shit. Drop something in the links. Drop something in the comments. Feel what do you think? Buddy? What do you th- what do you think it's going on? You know, down at the border. That's what we want to know. What's your what's your what's your thoughts about it? Crisis or human trafficking? Predetermined. Let, let us know down in that comment section. I think human trafficking. Just me. Like, yo, bro, the man owned the island right next to Epstein's, right? And that, I, people here, okay, he owned the island next to Epstein, so what? But this is also the same island that Epstein ended up buying after Joe Biden no longer owned it. And they thought that Epstein was trafficking people from this island. I don't know, man. Because because there was already access to traffic people from the island. There was already a way to do it, everything on the island. Like <clears throat> you got all these tunnels. Exactly. Everywhere. So why would why would Biden have a fucking tunnel have all have an island with all these tunnels on it? That he ends up letting fucking Epstein buy. I don't know. 
guess I guess we'll just have to stay tuned and find out. And then you got a son who's fucking a crackhead. Telling people out to China. Yeah, 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 sure. I can give you secrets. No problem. You, you got that stuff? When's, uh, when's it all going to come to a head? That's what I want to know. As soon as Trump makes his own social media page. He's talking about making his own uh, platform. I can only imagine what he's going to call it. I ain't going to lie. If it's free, I'll sign up. I just want to hear what he's got to say. That's the only reason why I was on Twitter. I'm not going to lie to you people. I was on Twitter just for Donald Trump. And now that Donald Trump's not on Twitter, I really don't go on it anymore. I feel like there's a really amazing and intense conversation going on outside Pat's house right now. Like there's two fucking meth heads just sitting there arguing. Sounds like a couple of intoxicated ladies. Oh, can we get an interview? They're leaving the Polish home. Can I get an interview? Bro, I couldn't even get to the bottom of my stairs without my Wi-Fi cutting off. You think I can make it over to the Polish home? (laughs) No, you just yell. You're outside already. You just go, hey, y'all want to be on TV? Y'all want to be famous? That's right. So then you got these two drunk girls talking about all of their friends. Yo, we're about to be famous. We're about to be on TV. They tell everybody to watch it. You ever heard that damn uh, YouTuber uh, the show called Safety Meeting? You ever heard that one? Shoot. Them boys are funny as hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have nothing to go along with that one. You kind of threw me off. The one boy. My God, sometimes I got to put on sunglasses. His face is so damn bright. I know, man. Damn it. Back up from the levee a little bit. Jesus. Nothing I can do about it, Joe. It is what it is. I'm pretty sure you could probably stand in a completely dark room and you just glow. I don't know. I'm I'm almost certain of it. I could probably spot you in any dark woods anywhere. Oh, look, it's Pat. Yep, right in the nuts. Mm. No. So for anybody out there who doesn't know, me and Pat used to play paintball. And uh, I was hiding in uh, uh, some bush up underneath uh, a log. And Pat came barreling through the fucking woods. I don't know what he was running from, but he came barreling through the fucking woods like a man <laughs> on a mission. And I just turned and shot him. And I ended up shooting him right in the fucking nuts. And I'm not going to lie. I could not stop laughing, (laughs) which completely gave my position up. But I thought it was hilarious. Him, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. He says he was running like like crazy. And he didn't know why. Dude, we're playing paintball. <laughs> we're in a firefight. That's why I'm running, Joe. That's why I'm running. My, I'm not just running because I feel like it. My strategy of bunkering down was working just fine. Yeah, it was. So, so. All right, Joe. I know you want. It. So here it is. So here's the play-by-play, right? So, uh, okay, I'm I'm in the middle of a firefight with this dude. That's off, okay? So he's at my 4 o'clock, okay? And he's probably a good 30 yards from me. But he's got me pinned down with a fully auto. He's just lighting me up. So I'm running like fucking Forrest Gump through the woods, right? I move like a gazelle. I'm just, I'm so, it's so gracious. You're so there's this log. that fast. I know, I know. I'm Come on, I'm trying to sell the story here. So... So here I am. I see this log. I go to hurdle the log. And as I'm in midair, on the other side of this log uh, is a person. And this person says, oh, and goes, bop, bop, bop. And shoots <laughs> me directly in the balls. And, of course, out of instinct, I go paralyzed. And I go face first into the ground, uh, <laughs> which happened to be poison ivy. 
that that kind of sucked. But uh, yeah, we played ping pong before, Joe. Yeah, it was awesome, bro. I love that story. It's so much better when you tell it too. I ain't gonna lie. Well, I mean, it, I don't need to like, brag like about you... how I've been shot in the balls multiple times while playing ping pong. That's it's not like really you, a it's, thing. That... It's like you brought me right back to the situation. Mm-hmm. Felt like I was there. I can imagine being that person laying on the ground and you just hovering over him and him saying, oh, shit, I can shoot him in the balls. <laughs> it was pop, pop. Oh, God. Ah, oh, I'm out. I screamed. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> it hurt so bad. I laid there and tried not to throw him. Balls. <laughs> Oh, shit. I was already breathing heavy because I was running like a son of a bitch. <coughs> Mike lit me up. Yep. Just couldn't stop laughing. That was one of the hardest times I ever went face first into the ground. I'm not going to lie. You feel safe any, any, you know, any of you guys play ping pong and live anywhere in the New York area? Hit us up. We love to play in the summertime. <laughs> Play out safe. in the woods. Motherfucker, you need to stop asking me if I feel safe. I am always safe. Damn it. So Are you fine. feeling safe? I'm not, though. That's why I was asking if you're feeling safe, and then you keep on ignoring my question. Oh. I just wanted an answer. Yes. <laughs> We we play. We want to play some video games. No. Fuck yourself, Joe. I'm just being honest with you, man. <laughs> They've been starting to annoy me lately. I ain't gonna lie to you. It happens. Like, just don't got the patience. I I like. I, I'll try to play, and. The first thing, like, you know, I, it really pisses me off when you land somewhere and before you can even grab a gun, someone kills you. That one pisses me off. I think you should, uh, should automatically start with at least a pistol. Right. Great or a knife. Something. Well, I mean, you got a pickaxe. That's your knife. I mean, no, something that can actually do real damage. You know, Call of Duty back in the day. If you knife someone, that was that was a kill. True. Nowadays, you gotta fucking knife them twice. Like I just stabbed you in the neck. Why? How are you standing? <laughs> just trying to be fair. If any guys like tonight's episode, appreciate you guys for staying and checking us out. Yo, so I was watching this video earlier, right? They were talking about Kane. Like, for some reason, I got into, like, wrestling videos. Fucking, do you think Kane had the best story of all time? Kane? Yeah. Yeah. Like, especially with the way that they brought it out. Like, they spent, like, a good, like, month, two months talking about it. Paul Bear sitting there giving stories, saying, I got something. I got Undertaker's biggest, darkest secret, this, that, and the third. Sitting there telling him, Kane's alive. Kane's alive. And then, boom, next thing you know, this fucking big monster is just ripping down the door to hell in the cell, whooping to Undertaker's ass. Media star. Media star. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, cause you look at the way they did it. They already said, it. well, Undertaker's such a success. Why not? I just have it so he copies every movie he's got. Movie's got. Yeah. Pretty much. He's an agile big guy. Yeah. He's jacked. 100%. He didn't have to talk for the first seven years of his career. <laughs> There's that one, too. Like, think about that. That had me hooked as a kid, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. 
as a kid, I was more of a Kane fan than anybody else. But he never won. So eventually I had to go on to somebody else. They never let him really get a championship shot. He got it the one time and then never, never sniffed it again. The other person I liked was Hardcore Holly. Yeah, he was cool. I just like the hardcore matches, bro. I like the uh I like the early Brock Lesnar. Like before, he tried, Brock. before he tried being a WWE uh, uh UFC UFC fighter. Yeah. Before then, yep. He was pretty badass during that at that time period. I mean he fucking basically broke his neck trying to do a backflip on Kurt Angle. Yeah. Yep. Still won the championship, though. You know who I thought should have been more of a star but never really panned out to be shit? Bobby Lashley. He's the champ right now. He's going to WrestleMania. Is he? Yeah. He's the champ right now. Man, but see, I remember when he wasn't even in WWE no more, man. Yeah, WrestleMania's coming up in like two weeks. Oh, shit. I have to find a way to watch I think. it for free. <laughs> Any of you guys watch wrestling? Just a question. Really only for WrestleMania and Royal Rumble. Those are good ones. Like I can't really sit down and watch it every every week. It gets it gets boring. I don't know any of the wrestlers anymore. Bobby Lashley is definitely the channel. I'm pretty sure. I think he's full. He's going against Drew McIntyre. I haven't Who? watched it in a couple of weeks. Toby McGuire? No, Drew McIntyre. Isn't that a country singer? No. Definitely inebriated. Totally need to get an interview, bro. I'm just checking that out. If I, had, if I had inebriated people around me, I'd be like, yo, you want to talk to some people? Okay, who, uh, just go, we'll just go ask him right now. Who is the president of the United States in 2021? Donald Trump. I bet you I never get two same answers. I got one. That, I got one that'll slip him up for sure. I'm um, just come up to everybody, and be like, "Yo, who's the commander in chief?" Ain't no one gonna be able to answer that. <laughs> who's Jose, man? That's who I want to know. Who? You know, like Jose, like you know, in that song, right? It goes, <laughs> "Jose, can you see?" <laughs> who's Jose? Who's Jose? That's what I want to know, man. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get him on. <laughs> you know what? I bet you you could probably get a good a good couple answers out of that. People trying to like legitimately answer it. You know, well, oh yeah, Jose. He was he was the first president. I know everyone calls him George, but his real name was Jose yeah. George Washington Gonzalez. <laughs> he was really a Mexican guy. <laughs> like what? Mexicans were fucking Mayans and Aztecs back then, bitch. What are you talking about? Jose, can you see? <laughs> I don't care who you are. If you don't laugh at that, go fuck yourself. That's funny. <laughs> oh, shit. Yep, I'm feeling pretty safe. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry, people, but kids will drain you. Big facts. True. Try, try to get Pat in here on another another episode soon. Maybe on a Monday night, Tuesday night, Sunday night, something. Sunday night. Sunday night. Well. Yeah, he so, wants to go out. He's like, please, man, please. He's feeding. Uh, he's feeding for it. Ooh. Well, I'm feeling pretty safe for sure. I, I uh, hope you all are feeling safe too. 
Hopefully, I hope you all had fun with us. And uh, look forward to you next time. That's right. If you didn't like it, go fuck yourself. Peace. Be good. Be good to each other. Love y'all.